We've been given the name of the manager of the Foynes Flying Boat Museum. Apparently Margaret O'Shaughnessy dabbles in genealogy and somehow has managed to get hold of the parish records for the Shanna Golden area. So we're going to have a sneak look at it now. While we searched the church records for my O'Shaughnessy's, Margaret O'Shaughnessy told me some stories about her family. Records sometimes were burnt and lost. As you see from the records we have here, we start in 1824. Anything before that is not here. Uh, and this is the Shanna Golden Fines registers. The other thing is that people were born at their home. They didn't go to hospital. And then a few days later, they were immediately taken away to the church to be baptized or christened. And the mother did not go because she uh, was not well enough. So either an aunt or an uncle and the father and whoever the sponsors or the godparents would be would go to church. And to show you the way things can make, get mixed up, when I got married, my husband's name was Tom O'Shaughnessy. But when we actually went to get the paperwork to get married, he wasn't Tom at all. He was Michael. <laughs> and how these happened was, mother in bed gives the instructions, name is Michael Thomas. But when they go down to church, they just say it wrong. They say, Thomas Michael. You know, and it just gets confused that way. So that's one thing to remember. The other thing is, try and do some research before you come and don't leave the material after you. Bring it with you. Because you can often find that a person's name is their second name. But if you bring all the information with you, there are lots of people prepared to help. Right. And they're not in it professionally, but they just like to let people find their ancestors, yeah. particularly when you go to the local area or the local graveyard. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes the dates can be slightly wrong in that the registering of the birth through the civil records and the registering of the baptism can be totally different because people didn't do it. They that might could be, what, years, years apart or months? Not years, but months, months. certainly months. Mm -hmm. I, I had an aunt who always celebrated her birthday, I think it was the, the, the 9th of August, Puck Fair. Her mother said, you were always born Puck Fair. Mm -hmm. But when she genuinely went looking at records, she was born in March. That's so from up. March to <laughs> August, you know. So don't always check a good bit either side of the mm -hmm. dates you have. There are some excellent people in the country doing it. And like everything else, there are some people that probably aren't that expert. Mm -hmm. Would mother have said August? covering up the fact that she might have been um, no because she was the, no because she was the fifth or sixth child so it didn't okay. matter <laughs> but it's just over the years confusion yeah you know yeah. and uh, so many things with 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 different civil wars here and all that lots of records burnt uh, churches burned down mm. records lost it's wonderful that we even can get to back as far as 1824 oh, sure. and then there is usually a central area for a county that you can go to but the, the local priests are fantastic. Mm. They give time, they give you out the books, and they let you do what you can. But I do feel you need you know, something concrete before you come here. Mm. Because we've had so many people come to the museum purely because we're a tourist office, and we are a museum, and we've nothing to do with genealogy. But we would certainly try to help them. Mm. I'd say 90% of your tourists are here because of genealogy. <laughs> With us, it's slightly different in that 90% of our tourists would be here because like the same thing their grandfathers or their fathers flew for Pan Am or flew from Antilles airboats or flew for Qantas or flew for any of those airlines and they're coming tracing right. because we do have an Australian connection with the aviation side as well. The last uh, official flights from Sydney to Lord Ho Island were done and those planes went on to become the property of uh, a guy called Captain Charlie Blair who was married to a very famous Irish woman Maureen O'Hara Mm. Uh, from the Quiet Man movies and the John mm. Wayne movie. Maureen's still alive. She was here last week. She's the patron of our museum. So we, we have the connection. Yeah. So if anybody's wanting to trace family connected with the flying boats, can they contact you? They can contact us. We ha we're on the internet. We're, we're um, not as up to date maybe as we'd like to be, but we are. And we have quite a lot of passenger records and that. But we didn't have a direct service from Australia to here. Mm. That was but too that far at the time. So, but we did have to Africa. Mm -hmm. And then Africa connected on again uh, to, to Cape Town and from Cape Town on to Australia. So there can be mm. uh, a good bit. New Zealand is another one. There can be connections. And when did that start? What year? The first passenger flights on the North Atlantic were 1939. 
Okay. So it's much more recent. Yes. <laughs> yes. Margaret, was there a class system here in the 1800s? Certainly. I mean, uh, for a farmer's son to marry somebody from a small homestead or cottage was unheard of. And if they did marry, they usually eloped. Oh. Um, my own grandparents eloped. And that is why, again, even though they were both from the Shannon Golden Parish, there's no records of them. No. They're in a different parish to get married at 6.30 a.m. in the morning. Okay. Right. <laughs> so that's just something as well that can come into play. Um, you had, you see, like all countries, different stratas of society. And it was frowned on if you moved outside the strata you were on. But of course it happened and there were wonderful marriages and produced wonderful families and eventually accepted. So that is another thing when you're cha chasing up different names that if you, usually you don't know the actual background to the marriage, that you can often find you can be chasing for ages that they're from a certain area but they didn't get married in that area mm -hmm. purely because parents were against it. So they made their little arrangements secretly and went off with two friends to a different church to get married. Mm. So the farm worker was one of the lowest on the... Um, so well, wrong. let's put it this way, if the farm worker wanted to marry the farmer's daughter, it certainly it wasn't, wasn't good news, no. Mm. Mm. And um, it's just the way things were in country life, and thankfully it's gone. And everybody has equal opportunities mm. now. And, but at that time, we're talking, you know, people are coming back to trace 1800s. Mm. It's a different type of system, mm. a, di a different Ireland. Mm. We're modern Ireland now. But that, that also is a factor to take into account if you're tracing. Yes that they might not necessarily have got married in their local church due to parents objecting to the marriage. Okay. But once they were over 21, they were legally able to get they married. Do that on. Yes. Yeah. Canon O'Keefe came to collect the records he had so kindly lent us. And while he was there, we had an interesting discussion about the location of records in the nearby areas. And I suppose if you go back on the um, records, outside of a few areas in Limerick City, there'd be very few. Shannon Golden, in actual fact, would be one of the first in West Limerick for records in 1824. Mm. You'd have very few previous Before to that. that. You know, Castle West now would be about, yeah. back about 17, 80 or 90. There is a list of those that you yeah. can get inside in the Grand Ring. Well, what I just said and, was, and my aunt was always told she was born in Puck Fair. Yeah. And for years she celebrated her birthday in the, in the yeah. books and then discovered years later that that was yeah, the day she, yeah. she wasn't born that she was born three months before. Yeah. So the records of that area would be very scant and mm. the national records would only begin about 1860 something, 1865 mm. or 6 or something, the national records that were uh, records of burning down in the, That's G what I was in, in the GPO. Yeah. And uh, so as a result you'd have to come back to parishes uh, and, and parochial records yeah. previous to 1860 because you'll find nothing state-wise. Yeah. If there's places now such as cities, Limerick City, you could go back well over 100 years more, mm. go back well into the 1700s, 1600s, from the, right, five, okay. from the five original uh, parishes in Limerick City. Oh. But Killaloo now would be a different diocese. Killaloo would be Killaloo, would be Killaloo diocese itself, yeah. Claire. Claire. Uh, from it, yeah. And Glen, that's a different diocese Glen as well. Is, no, no Same Glen, diocese. Is the, Glen is the first parish in our diocese. So it's uh, part of Limerick. It mm -hmm. is, yes. That's yeah. why I said if you went to the Limerick Archives. <coughs> yeah. I've got it on another branch of the family. I've those, got family in Glen. Yeah, those two books, black books that you had there, yeah. uh, you will find the identical same inside in the Heritage Centre. In, okay. in, 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 in but would find other surrounding yeah. parishes as That's well. Right, yeah. So yeah. Glen, them oh, there would you, yeah. Glen should be there as well? It would, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I said yeah. it's worth And Glen yeah. are later, far later records, in fact. Mm. Well, the ones from but there, there they would are have the 1850, they, they arrived in Australia in 1857. They would be there certainly of that era, mm. yeah. They would be certainly mm. there, yeah. And yeah. I, I, I give him my card then and said if there's anything specific yeah. to come back. Because yeah. yeah. you could search graveyards, I mean, you know, well, how, no. many, <laughs> how many graveyards have we here? Five. 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 Well, we searched one yesterday and found hundreds of O'Shaughnessy's, but yeah. not mine. <laughs> yeah. There'd be five, um, and, and Foynes wouldn't have, it'd be the only area that doesn't have a graveyard. Mm. Robertstown would have two, and there'd be like that, three in Shannon Gordon side, yeah. Mm. Uh, mm. from it and uh, there would be lists I'd have names uh, often the headstones have they got cemetery transcriptions there would be a list of those names for the five in the parish really yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, cemeteries uh, broken down into different religions not here as such not in the parish here no although Shannon Golden would have uh, some 
Church of Ireland people, yes, there would have been an old, the remains of the church in Shanagoden would be uh, Church of Ireland. We left Foynes and headed off past the Glynn Castle Gates in search of more churches, cemeteries and records. We'll see you next time.